All right, so we're back with another episode. So in the last episode, we talked about authentication. We talked about Passport JS. So if you aren't familiar with those two terms, go ahead and watch the previous episode, which is I think episode number 14. In this episode, we're gonna go ahead and set up the local strategy. So again, like I said, make sure you go watch the previous episode. We installed Passport. We also installed Passport Local because we're gonna go ahead and set up our own username and password uh, authentication strategy. So that's why we're using Passport Local. And we also made sure we enabled the passport uh, middleware alongside with the passport session. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually implement our local strategy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called strategies. Whoops. Strategies. And I'm going to create a new file and I'll call this uh, local. I'll actually go ahead and just call this... Uh, local.js okay we might have other strategies too of course well we will i will show you how to implement oauth2 later but uh you might have other strategies too and you can actually use multiple strategies for your application so right now we're going to go ahead and import uh the passport library so similar to what we did in the index.js file and then we're going to go ahead and import we want to go ahead and import from the passport local. You want to import strategy. And I'll call this uh, local strategy. If I can do that. No, I can't do that. This is not a, we're not using import. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're importing the uh, this strategy class. Okay, if you want to take a look at it, this is what it looks like. Okay, but all it really is, is the uh, passport strategy class. And we're going to create an instance of this class. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call passport dot use. And then we're going to go ahead and pass in an instance of our strategy class. So we're going to go ahead and invoke the constructor. And over here, we can go ahead and pass in uh, the set of options and then what we're going to do is instead of passing in options we're actually going to pass in a function okay because we're using a local strategy okay so uh, typically if you're using something like uh, oauth2 um, you would actually pass in a set of options over here and this is where you would actually pass in uh, like your client id and stuff but you can also pass in other stuff too um, if you need certain things right because, for example, you can specify what the username field is supposed to be. You can specify what the password field is going to be. And we're actually going to pass in a username field because our username field is really the email field. So I'm actually going to leave that like that. The password field will be will be will be left alone. But if this was a uh, if this was, for example, an OAuth two strategy, we would go ahead and pass in the client ID, the client secret. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Uh, you'll know what you'll know what that is when we actually go over OAuth two. Uh, in this passport uh, series, okay, or this uh, ExpressJS tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and pass in a second parameter, which is uh, the verify function. And this verify function is where we're going to perform our logic, similar to what we did in the auth.js uh, login route. Okay, and I'll explain a little bit more. But for now, you can actually also see that uh, in Visual Studio Code, it gives you IntelliSense, and it also hints that there's three parameters, the username, password, and string. Uh, a user, I'm sorry, username, password, and a function called done. Okay, we'll talk about that function after, but let's go ahead and pass in our parameters. So since our username field is actually the email field, we'll go ahead and pass an email, password, and this done argument. Okay, so before I do anything else, let me go ahead and just console log email and console log password. Okay, right now, we need to go ahead and import this strategy into the main file. So what we're going to do, whoops, I meant to do it the other way. Okay, so we're going to go up here and I'm going to go ahead and just do require uh, strategies local like this. Okay, so all we're really just doing is just importing literally this whole thing. If you want to, you could just literally, you don't have to create the strategies file. Uh, you can just literally just move everything in here. But I don't really like doing that because I want to keep everything in its own file. So that way we don't have to put everything in the main file. Okay, but all we're doing is we're just importing passport.use into here. Okay, now 
we need to actually invoke our strategy. Okay, we've registered our strategy. We now need to invoke it. Now, how do we do that? So we need to go to our auth.js router. In general, you want to go to any endpoint that you want to have Passport be invoked. So let's say, for example, if for some reason you want to invoke Passport for the markets route, you could do that. If you want to invoke it for the groceries route, you can do that. Okay, but it makes sense for us to invoke it when the user calls the slash API slash auth slash login route. So we're going to invoke that right over there. Now I'm going to go ahead and just comment. I'm just going to comment out this whole part over here and I'll go ahead and just underneath it, I'll do router.post slash login. Remember we have everything inside the auth router. So the prefix of this route is going to be prefixed with slash API slash auth. Okay. Now, instead of passing in only two parameters, which is normally the, the route path, as well as the uh, request handler, we're going to pass in the uh, passport middleware. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead up here. Whoops. Let me go ahead and import passport inside auth.js. And we're going to go ahead and call passport to authenticate. And we're going to pass in the strategy name, which is just local because we're dealing with, uh, we're dealing with local strategy. Okay. Now, once we pass this in, you can optionally pass in the request and response object if you want to, but you don't really need to do that. Okay. But if you need to do something else afterwards, you can, but, uh, we're going to go ahead and just send a 200 for now. I will also, uh, I will also log as well. Just to show you what happens once everything is successful. Okay. So we invoke passport by passing in passport to authenticate, passing the name of the strategy as the second middleware before our request handler, just like this. Okay. Very, very, very straightforward stuff. Okay. Now let's go ahead and actually test this out. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Postman and we're going to go ahead and see how we can actually. Uh, log in now with passport. All right, so we're inside postman right now. We're going to go into uh, the address bar and we're going to go ahead and put in API slash API slash auth slash login. And let's see what's going on. Four, four not found. Uh, did I set this up correctly? It's port 2001 slash API slash auth slash login. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's slash uh, API slash V1. Completely forgot about it. I don't normally prefix it with the version, but okay, there we go. All right, so good. And we got a 400 bad request. Now, don't worry. Let's go to the logs and see what was logged. Okay, so let me just exit this side pane on our terminal. Okay, so so far, nothing was logged. And the re okay, so actually, uh, let me actually pass in a request body, of course, completely forgot about that. So let's pass in the email. Let's pass in anson at gmail.com. Let's pass in the password and we'll do one, two, three. Now you're going to see that right now we get a different uh, response. Well, we don't, we haven't gotten a response yet, but if we look at the terminal, you're going to see that, well, look what it says. It says our email and the password, which is what we passed in. Okay. And you can see that inside the local.js file uh, inside this callback function, also known as the verify function, we're actually logging that. Okay. Now let me also show you one more thing as well. If I were to pass in an actual username field, uh, and if I were to uh, hit enter, the logs would actually only consider email. Okay. Uh, well, whatever email is would be basically um, the value that we're actually getting. And that's the reason why uh, the reason why it's ignoring the username is because we set this username field. If I were to actually remove this options over here and just pass in the function instead, well, what happened is this email parameter over here would actually get the username field from the request body. And you'll see that if I make a request again, you'll see that it's uh, it's uh, getting the username and not the email. See how it's logging Anson and not gmail.com. So I just wanted to throw that out there just so you all um, would understand that better. Okay, so now what do we actually wanna do 
from here. Whoops. What do we actually want to do inside this verify function? Well, similar to what we did in auth.js, I'm going to move that to the side because I'm just going to uh, put that as a reference. We want to go ahead and perform the same steps that we did inside auth.js, inside this, uh, this, this, uh, this simple authentication uh, route over here. The idea is what we need to do every single time the user tries to log in. And again, if you understand the flow of this, it's going to be very easy to understand authentication in general. Every single time the user calls our endpoint, and passes in the email and password. You basically want to search the database for the uh, the field that you're actually going to be uh, using the that, that the user is going to be using to log in. In our case, it's going to be an email. Okay, for your application, it might be a username. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, where uh, we're going to check to see if there's no email or no password. Okay. Now, what we did in this implementation over here was if there's no email or there was no password, which meant that if the user passed in an empty body, or if they passed in either, uh, if they passed in either just the email or just the password, it would return a 400. Now, in our case, how do we actually return an invalid request? Well, what we can actually do is we can actually throw an error. So let's just do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and send just the email. You're going to see it says bad request. Okay, it gives us a 400. Uh, let's see. Um, actually, let me do this. Instead of throwing the error, let me actually show you one thing that we can also do. Is we can call done. And you'll notice that this done function takes in two parameters. Well, it takes in a total of three. But the first parameter is an error. So typically you would use this done function to indicate that you're done with the authentication verify function. Okay, so what's gonna happen is when you call this done function, it's gonna take you away from this uh, from this uh, authentication function and it's gonna bring you back to the main, uh, to the, to, it's, gonna, it's gonna basically go to the next middleware. In our case, it would actually be uh, this request handler function over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just pass in an error like that. And for user, we'll pass a null because there's no user because we didn't actually search the database yet. We're only doing some validation. Okay. So if I save, okay, uh, if I go ahead and click send, it's going to send me back a bad request. And I'm not sure why it's not giving me back. Uh, it seems like it won't actually give me back whatever this, uh, this string is. Okay, but that's okay. So we'll leave it like this for now. Okay, now what's what, what's next? So if they actually do provide both fields, then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing that we did in the auth.js and we're just going to search for the user. So I'm going to go and just copy and paste that there and I'm going to go ahead and import our user model, which is from the database folder uh, schemas user right over here. So we're going to find a user by the email, if there's no user found, then we're going to go ahead and we can also call the done function as well. But um, I'm actually just going to, instead of calling done, I'll just throw an error. Uh, missing credentials. You can actually implement an error boundary so you can actually handle these errors if you want to. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and throw the errors. Okay, and also let me add async keyword because we're using await. Okay, so now if we actually found the user, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and compare the passwords now. So again, the same thing that we're doing inside this function we're going to do inside here. So I'm going to copy and paste that. And let me go ahead and import uh, compare password from utils helpers. Okay, and I'm just going to literally just copy and paste all of this stuff over here because, again, it's really just the same logic. Okay, so when we call compare password, what this does is it compares the raw text password that we sent in through, uh, through our client, and it's going to compare with the user's hashed password. Okay, and that's what we're doing here. We're passing in the raw password, and then we're passing the user's hash, the, the user's hashed password. And this 
uh, compare password function returns a boolean. So it will return true if the passwords actually match. So if it's actually true, now what we're going to do instead of uh, calling request.session.user or not, instead of referencing request.session.user and modifying it, and we can't even do that because we don't have the request object in our function, at least not right now. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is where we go ahead and call done. We pass in null for user, or I'm sorry, we pass in null for the error, and we pass in the user object right over here. Okay? And if the user passed in an invalid password, then all we'll do is we'll just pass in done, and we'll just pass in null and null. Okay? And one more thing that we could also do is just wrap this inside a try catch. So actually, it'll throw the error inside here and it will catch it down here. So in the end, we'll actually just pass in the error over here and we'll pass a null for user. Okay, so let's just walk through the flow of this real quick. So all we're doing is we're just checking to see if there's no email or there's no password. So if they provide one or the other, we're going to throw an error. Uh, and also, let me actually move that inside here. Okay, uh, let me move that inside here. Okay, and then afterwards, we're going to go ahead and fetch the database. If the user was found based on the email, uh, we're going to continue. If they were not found, we'll throw an error. We're going to catch it down here, and we're going to use the done function. We're going to pass in the error object. And if this is truthy, that means uh, Passport will take care of handling that for us. Okay, It will actually know what to do. In, in other words, it will actually send back a bad request response. So if the user is found, we then need to compare the raw text password that we sent through Postman or the client or the browser, right? Uh, we need to compare the raw text password with the hash that is saved in the user's uh, record, right? If it returns true, which means that the password's matched, then we're going to go ahead and just, we'll just log authenticate successfully. But most importantly, we need to go ahead and call this done function. We need to pass in null for the error, and we need to pass in the user, okay, the user instance. And this is important because this is going to actually allow us to then serialize and deserialize the user into the session, which we're going to talk about in the next video. Okay, so uh, let's just kind of go ahead and put a, put a bunch of logs just so that we can keep track of every single step. So I'll do invalid authentication here. And, uh, and the rest will just be logged down here in the try catch. Okay, I think we're pretty much good. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and send an email and password. We should get a bad request. Okay. I don't know why though. Um, it doesn't want to log the error here. Oh, did I log? I logged the wrong variable. Okay. Uh, still not logging, but that's okay. Let's just continue. So let's go ahead and pass on a password now. So this is unauthorized. Okay. So notice how it says invalid authentication. So we actually do have a user with the anson at gmail.com uh, email address in our database, but it's just that we were passing in the incorrect password. If I remember correctly, the password that we set was hello, hello world one, two, three. Okay. Now let's take a look at the logs real quick. You're going to see that we were, we're logging authenticated successfully, which means that we're inside this if condition right over here, this if, or this if statement rather than the else. Okay, so notice how we call done with null as the error and we pass in the user TB. Now, you'll also notice something interesting that I also mentioned before, uh, something about serializing the user into the session. Now, the reason why this error is happening is because right now we are not serializing the user into the session. And the reason why that's important is because we need to actually uh, take the user and we need to actually attach that user to the request.session as well as the request object. So that way, we need to actually modify the session. So we take that session ID that I mentioned in the session tutorial. We take that individual session ID and we correlate that session ID with the user that is trying to log in. So going forward, when we send that session ID or that or when we send that session ID back to the client so that the client can store it as a cookie future requests will be able to send that cookie to the server and we'll know who that user is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video right over here because we talked about a lot of stuff. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and set up the passport serialized user and passport deserialized user 
uh, functions. So I'll go ahead and see you all in that next episode. Peace out.